Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the SAML, which is Security Association Markup Language. Uh, I'll explain you what is the SAML, how the typically workflows. Uh, then we'll talk about the different security risk or vulnerabilities in the in this SAML that you can find during the pen test, and and what are the tools that you can use during the pen test as well. So first off, uh, let's start with what is the SAML workflow. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for the weekly episodes. All right, so uh, let's start with an example. Uh, let's say you want to log in to an to an website called uh, abc.com, and you, when you want to log in, it says uh, like you know there is an identity provider, and Gmail is a is a good example. It says log in with Gmail account. When you click on it, it redirects you to the Gmail. Uh, Gmail authenticates you. Uh, if you've got all the permissions, then it says, okay, yeah, this is good. It will redirect you back to the abc.com and then you're good to go. So in this case, there are three essential parties. One, uh, you have the user who wants to authenticate. One, which is abc.com, uh, which is the service provider, which you want to uh, like, you know, get authentication for. And then there is Gmail, which is called identity provider. So how the SAML workflow uh, uh, like you know uh, operates is first user sends request to SP in our example which is abc.com then SP redirects to IDP uh, so this is like you know abc.com redirecting you to the uh, Gmail then the user authenticates to IDP so here you will authenticate with Gmail then IDP attaches the SAML response and signs with the private key so here the uh, Gmail when it says like you know okay I have how does the abc.com would know whether you have logged in or like authenticated or not so IDP will check your authentication and if it finds uh, everything good then it attaches the signature you can say like you know any certificate that someone signs like your university so it signs with a private key and sends, sends it back to the S, uh, service provider which is abc.com now SP, which is service provider, validates the response with IDP's public key, of course. So it has access to Gmail public key, uh, and then it will validate whether the uh, sign is actually from Gmail or not, or somebody's forging it, right? So again, when we are discussing, just try and think about like you know different scenarios you can do. So one scenario I just come across is, what if service provider is not validating uh, the IDP signature? Like you know, I can forge. I can sign the signature using some other like you know site and, and give it to service provider and if it trusts me then I'll get access to abc.com but anyway we'll discuss about this risk later on and the, far, the last step is after verification SP grants access to the user now this is the easier way to understand right so as I said like there are three parties one this is the user this is service provider and this is IDP which is identity provider First, it will request what uh, requests the service provider. Then, request will go to the IDP. IDP will authenticate with the user data source. So, Gmail has a database with the list of authenticated user. If everything works, then IDP goes back to the service provider. Service provider says, "Okay, this looks good. The signature is also good from IDP," and it redirects user to the website. So, this is the typical workflow that you want to understand now one other thing i would also mention is there are times where you have one idp for different service providers so abc.com so like if you go on the web there are hundreds of different sites like there's facebook.com there is they're just numerous sites right so and and many of them have are using same idp so you might have like you know let's say in your corporate network you might also have like one identity provider and then it gives uh, like you know access to multiple service providers so there is a one to many relationships and the reason i explain that is because you might find some security vulnerabilities some some authentication flaws uh, when you have this like you know one to many mappings but not really good validation so let's see uh, what are the security risks that we have uh, like you know security concerns with this workflow so one is as, as i said like service provider missing signature validation so imagine in the previous scenario if service provider does not validate if the response has came from the idp or identity provider it does not check with the public key then essentially i as an attacker i can set a request 
when the response is coming back from the IDP, what I'll do is, of course, I can intercept the response, right, uh, through Burp or any other tool. I'll change the response or I'll, I'll make a response such a way, and there, there are so many tools out there. We'll also discuss that. But I'll change the uh, response in a such a way that it looks like, yeah, I got authenticated or like IDP validated my authentication. And when it comes to a service provider, they will say, okay, uh, IDP says like this, so I'll grant you an access. So this is a major flaw if you if they do not validate signature. The second is XML command injection. So in here, uh, when the request response, like this auth request and response is coming back and forth between service provider and IDP, uh, at times uh, this assertion, it's called assertion, right? That is why it's called SAML, uh, service marker assertion language. So when the assertions are, are made from IDP, at times it's made of like an XML. And we all have talked about like, you know, I have actually talked about the XSC vulnerability. I've actually demonstrated how it typically works. So if there is a flaw, I can inject some bad XML so suppose idp authenticated me and said yeah this is uh, this uh, person has a user level access but if i inject an xml in a such a way that i can get the admin level access so i get privilege escalation then that's also another possibility one can do right so that is another uh, security risk a security concern when you are dealing with the saml and the third one is a reuse of the saml response to a different sp so as I said before, I can take the response, let's say identity provider, uh, when they sign the assertion, uh, it signs and, and says like, yeah, uh, the user is good and, and this assertion is good for abc.com. I intercept the request or response from IDP. I change from abc.com to xyz.com and I go to xyz and say, oh, I got this from IDP. Can you let me in? And xyz.com will say, yeah, I'll let you in because they did not verify the assertion was actually made for ABC, not for XYZ, because every I might not have access to every application. I might be authenticated for ABC, but not for XYZ. And this is why one-to-many relationships that I talked about earlier would make sense because there is one identity provider for multiple service providers. So this is definitely something you need to understand. And these are some advanced, like, you know, pen test uh, lessons that I'm giving you. So so this might not be like, you know, in, in your normal day-to-day uh, -day pen test that you're doing, but yeah, whenever you have come across such situation, like a Splunk is another example, which also uses SAML. So when you come across such examples, this is going to be a really, uh, like, you know, a good, uh, not just for doing that pen test, but also uh, if you're like, you know, your, your uh, professional career, if you're going to give the interview or something. All right, so let's talk about the tools. So one tool, uh, which I like a lot is SAML Rider. So as you can see here in the screenshot, uh, you can, um, uh, remove signature, re-sign assertion, re-sign the message, right? You can do all sort of things. You also modify assertion. Uh, this is right in the burp. You can download as an extender and extension and you can use it. Uh, of course, you can use Burp Pro for intercepting the request, response, and or any Burp community additions should also be fine. And then uh, it requires the manual testing. Uh, I I've hardly seen an automated scanner uh, to find such vulnerabilities, so I, I would say it's definitely worth by checking the manual testing. So I think this is yeah this is a good uh, scenario or example that I want to talk about. What is the SAML? How the secure? What are the security concerns? How do you deal with it? I'll also do a demo if you like. Uh, please leave a comment if you think I should do a demo on this vulnerability. I'll definitely do it. Uh, but that's that's all from this week. Please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Please uh, like you know follow us on the Facebook, which is cybersecuritytv.com, and then also uh, like you know subscribe to my channel. And I will definitely see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.